In this video I am going to show you how I created this epic prayer artwork using stock photography and digital overpainting techniques, so be sure to stay with me until the end because I am going to give you a lot of tips in creating shadows, highlights and so much more. I have created this background using the same techniques that I have used in the mystical tiger video so be sure to check out that uh, video where I explain more in detail how to create uh, the background part so the idea was that I first started with uh, this image of the mountain I have added a mask then on top of it I have added uh, this photo where I, I have also added a mask then on top I have added uh, this photo of those mountains I have added a mask and I have set them to multiply and uh, I have reduced the opacity to 40% and then on top I have added this photo of those mountains and I have also set it to multiply, added a mask and set the opacity to around 30%. And then following the same process that uh, I have told you that I have used in the mystical tiger video, I have uh, created a rest and uh, what I have extra here are the ancient ruins uh, which are those ones and uh, I'm going to explain you how I selected only those parts from, from them. So basically this is the image with the ruins and then I have added a mask selected only this part and then I have added this uh, dodge and burn so go to layer new layer and here set it to soft light and fill it with 50% gray now take the brush tool uh, set it to around 10% and with the black color if you paint it has the same uh, result as you will use the burn from the toolbar uh, I like to paint with black for the shadows and if you switch to white it will add uh, some uh, light then I have added a levels adjustment layer uh, where I have uh, decreased the lights and then I have uh, added a selective color where I have increased a bit the science but don't forget when you use selective color set the blending mode to color and then I have added another brightness and contrast and I have darkened the right and the bottom area then I have added another levels and this time I have brightened up the left and top area by moving the top sliders from the levels adjustments and I have repeated the process for the other part of the ruins which are those ones then on top of uh, these ones I wanted to have a road that takes us to the most important part of our artwork and uh, I have added a road and I have used this photo of this road I have set the blending mode to lighten and I have added a mask and mask uh, the parts that I didn't want to keep and uh, I have added a selective color adjustment layer same set to color and I have changed the colors to match my background colors. Here I have placed uh, this uh, teleporter in the middle and then using a grass brush I have uh, masked the bottom area to blend it uh, better with uh, the grass that we have in uh, the background. Okay, And then I have added an exposure and I have decreased the exposure and a selective color where I have uh, the same set it to color and moved around the sliders to match our teleporter with the rest of the background. On top of it I have added uh, this image and I have set it to screen and on top of it I have added the other one and the same I have uh, set it to screen and I have masked some parts out and then I have added a little bit of uh, glow here in the, the center. Now we reach the part with the statues and here I uh, was really lucky to use uh, Envato for this part because I could rotate uh, the same uh, statue and uh, choose the desired angle and uh, if you look it's the same statue and I just rotate it and use multiple angles to match my scene. So let me explain you how I created everything here. But before we start let's talk about the sponsor of today's video Envato Elements. I know that most of you may want to skip this part but you should stay and see how I use Envato in creating the most important part of my design. First I went to the 3D section and I searched for the statues and sculptures and I found what I was looking for and then this huge feature that Envato has in rotating the objects so you can choose any angle that you want helped me a lot to build up my entire scene because I was able to download all the angles that I needed as PNG and that means the background is transparent so I won't spend any more time in deleting the background. But that's not all. You can find over 55 million assets not just 3D. You can find any type of images, overlay, vectors, illustrations, video footages for intros for example, website templates if you want to build up your website really fast and also music for your videos or sound effects that you can use in any way that you want because you have unlimited download. You can download all the assets that you want with just one subscription. Envato Elements offers 50% off to an annual subscription. So rather than paying $33 per month on a monthly plan, 
you'll be paying only $16.50 per month on an annual plan. If you want to give it a try, I'll drop a link in the description below the video. So I started to place uh, the statues and uh, we're using the same technique with the grass. I have added a mask and the mask the bottom area then I have added an exposure adjustment layer and increase a bit the exposure then I have uh, placed the other one this one the same I have added a mask and mask with a grass brush the bottom area here I have uh, added another exposure but this time I have increased the offset here the same I have increased the offset to this one I have increased only the exposure and this one because it's uh, in the front I have decreased the exposure and I have did the same thing with uh, this one also. So that was the placement of the statues and then I have placed them into one single group and to this group I have added more settings. First of them is the dodge and burn where I have made uh, some parts of them uh, darker. So exactly like I explained you here in the ancient ruins part uh, is the same thing you add a layer set it to soft light with 50% gray and uh, you start to paint with the black color and as you can see I have darkened up some parts of my statues and then I have created another layer and set it to darker and I have painted with a gray black color to darken up even more some parts of my statues so you create a new layer and you set it to darker then with the brush tool this time the soft brush and the flow around the 10% we are going to pick a color from the statues so uh, take the eyedropper tool by holding alt now with the eyedropper we are going to select uh, a darker color from the statues this one which is the darkest color and we are starting to paint around to darken up some parts of our statues so basically i have darkened up the back of uh, my statues and some parts that were already uh, darker so this uh, thing i did by using uh, a layer set to uh, darker then I have added an exposure and made everything even darker and then I have added uh, another uh, levels adjustment layer and then with the selective color set also to color I have uh, moved the sliders so we can match our statues with the rest of the background and then with uh, the levels I have made everything uh, even uh, darker and now is the highlights part and as you know from my previous tutorials I use uh, linear dodge so go to layer new layer now set the blending mode to linear dodge and fill it with black so first of all when i'm creating my highlights or rim lights i'm setting up a base for the color or the reflective color so in our case we'll have this bluish color reflecting on our statues so after you create it uh, the layer double click on it and we are going to add a blend if and this will disperse much better the colors on our statues so here hold alt and click in the middle of uh, this uh, slider and drag the right slider until 100 then hit ok now with the brush tool we are going to select this color this bluish color we are going to paint where we think the lights will touch our statues so uh, we are going to start with this uh, from the right and I'm slowly painting on the sides and uh, you will repeat this process all right so uh, first you set up uh, this base and then you create another layer set to the same linear dodge and uh, fill it with black and this time we are not going to apply the blend if we are going to keep the layer like that and on uh, this layer I'm going to paint with a bluish color then I'm going to paint over with the white color so first I'm going to paint uh, with uh, this bluish color uh, some small rim lights after you finished with this one you change the color with uh, the white color and you are continuing to paint over with the white color but make the brush size smaller so yeah those uh, this is the way I create my highlights and then I wanted to change their eyes because uh, we cannot see their eyes so first of all you are creating a hue and saturation layer you set it to colorize move everything to your desired color something like that and then press Ctrl and I on the mask to invert it zoom to the parts that you want to modify in our case the eyes and switch to the white color and then if you paint 
on the parts that uh, you want to change their color it will change that uh, part that you are painting with a white color to the color that uh, you want then after you are doing this you can uh, you know change the color or the lightness or whatever you want you can change uh, everything in the hue and saturation if you prefer and then i repeated the process but this time with an exposure where i have increased the exposure to maximum and painted over to have some uh, white color into their eyes and then with a color fill set to color dodge i made a bit of glow you are creating a solid color adjustment layer in our case we need uh, that uh, magenta color and then on the mask press ctrl and i to invert it and set the blending mode to color dodge and then on the eyes part with the white color you can paint that uh, glow so using the white color and the brush now i'm painting over and it will add uh, that uh, glow So to have something in the foreground I have placed uh, this grass. Then let me show you how I created uh, this uh, holy thing, this uh, ghost or whatever you think it is. So I have uh, used this photo and I have uh, added a mask. So this is the image, we are going to duplicate it. So press Canton and J and I'm going to rename the underneath one ghost and I'm going to hide it for the moment. On this one, the top one, I'm going to double click and uh, click color overlay, set it to white 100% and then the outer glow almost 60 so 59 here, this blue color and the range 50 size 18, press ok and set the blending mode to color dodge. Then I have added a mask and with the black color and the size a bit bigger, I have masked uh, the bottom area and on the ghost one, set the blending mode to screen. On this one, I'm going to desaturate everything. Press Ctrl and U for hue and saturation adjustment layer. And here, decrease the saturation and a bit the lightness. Then go to filter, stylize and oil paint. Here, increase all of them to 10 and the shrine 3.3. Then hit OK. Then go to filter and here choose filter gallery. And you should choose stylize, glowing edges and the edge should be 2. Edge brightness 6, smoothness 5 and hit OK. Then I'm going to add another hue and saturation. Press Ctrl and U again. And this time press Colorize. We should choose something like a bluish color. Then go to Filter, Blur Gallery and here we should choose Pat Blur. Alright, let's uh, have everything to zero. And then we are going to add some paths. So click once in the bottom. Then uh, move this slider and click again. And hold it and then... After you are clicking, you see you can rotate this one, so we are going to make something like a shape. Uh, just try to have almost the same shape as uh, her legs and her body, and then press escape. Here we are going to add another one, starting bottom, and click again, and until here, press escape. We are going to do the same thing with uh, the hand also, something like that, press escape after you are finishing. The same with the other hand click once after you're releasing the click you can move this path yeah, something like that all right and then here i'm going to add another one click on the neck part and i'm going to add something like uh, this kind of path and another one uh, here something like that and hit escape we can increase the speed to around uh, 217 something like that the taper around uh, 18 and the strobe flashes around 4. After we created this shape with a pad blur, we are going to bring back the first one. And uh, on top of them, I have added a linear dodge and I have painted uh, manually some highlights, some hair, because I wanted to have a different shape. And then I have manually painted uh, the magic and all those things. I have a lot of tutorials on my channel on how to create this type of uh, magic. You can check out uh, the one with the little girl with the magic book. And then I added some uh, fire burning some torches first i have manually draw this uh, stick and i have uh, added uh, this fire and then i have added uh, some shadows on set to multiply and uh, i have added two shadows because we'll have many lights around it so i have repeated the process with uh, the other ones after i have added those uh, torches i have added using color dodge some 
reflections on the ground and on the statues because their light casts some lights on the ground and on the surrounding areas also. So create a new layer, set it to color dodge, double click to add a blend if, hold alt, drag the slider at around 100, then take the brush tool and let's sample this color for example from the fire and now if we paint on the ground you'll see that it will add uh, a really nice uh, reflection uh, on the parts that uh, you are painting and don't forget to paint also on the statues and near the areas where you have the fire. And then I have repeated the process and I have painted with lighten this time. So create a new layer and set it to lighten, double click the same thing, hold alt to add a blend if, drag it until 100, hit ok and then with the same color we are going to paint on the torches and a bit on the uh, statues. So I have looked everywhere on internet for this type of stock, <laughs> I couldn't find it. So I found it eventually on Neo stock and because I wanted to, his hands to be a little bit bended, I have added a Puppet Warp. So go to edit and here choose Puppet Warp and I have added those points on his hands and then I drag the parts that I want to change so you can make like an animated gif <laughs> from this one and I have repeated uh, the steps that I always uh, repeat so first this uh, soft light to add the shadows then levels to make him a bit uh, brighter and then with the hue and saturation I have changed uh, the colors and with the selective color at the end also I have changed his colors and with darken that i've showed you on the statues i have added more shadows and then the highlights first the base so the blend is applied and then are the highlights this time with blue and the last one it's with white and now let's apply the camera row filter and before applying it you need to make a screenshot from all the layers so press ctrl alt shift and i then right click and convert it to a smart object then go to filter and choose camera row filter. First on basic I increase, uh, I change a bit the temperature and the tint and then I increase the exposure, contrast, highlights, decrease the shadows, increase the whites and blacks and a bit te the texture clarity and the haze. And on detail here I love to use all the time uh, the sharpening noise reduction and color noise reduction and then you can press ok then after i finish with the camera row filter i have noticed that here on the top we need uh, more glow because this area is too gray so let's add a new layer and set it to color dodge and take the brush tool and and the color which is uh, close to white and uh, has some blue in it and then we are going to paint and to add some glow to uh, this uh, part I hope that you like the final result and if you found any value in this tutorial please subscribe to the channel, like the video and hit that notification bell to be in touch with my latest videos. As you know if you want your post to be featured into my videos you should use the tag Mr23Review whenever you post your work on Instagram. And for this uh, week featured artist I choose this artwork by Chahros Attic. I love this uh, cyberpunk uh, design with uh, the science and the magentas that I um, mostly use in my artworks and I must congratulate him and thank him for using my tag. And if you want your work to be nominated into my videos please don't forget to use the tag Mr23Review whenever you post your art on Instagram.